Yeah, so I've been working on, on uh, Cloud Foundry. It was actually a um, code name internally was AppCloud. Um, it started in uh, 2009. Uh, I joined in, in early 2010. And, uh, and then we launched it in 2011. So I don't know how many of you were around then. Um, and uh, so I'm still doing Cloud Foundry. It feels like an eternity, uh, frankly, at this point. But uh, today's a happy day. I work for a public company. So all of you read that. Raise your hands when you're done reading. It says, we might not do what I say we might do. OK, thank you. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a little bit about Pivotal CF today. And, um, and so, uh, you know, I'll give you a little background, right? So um, when we started Cloud Foundry, when I joined the group, so it was really small, six people or something like that, it was a small effort. And, um, and we knew kind of ballpark what we wanted to do, right? And we're ballpark there now. Um, but um, uh, and so uh, we, 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 we kind of worked away at it. And we did a, a kind of quiet public launch. And then we did a public launch. And we keep, but what we really wanted to do, um, and we're working at VMware, right, was how do we get this to VMware's customers? And VMware has a lot of customers, right? We've, like order magnitude, like several hundred thousand customers, tens of millions of VMs on vSphere. It's a big, you know, scale out organization, right? We wanted to take advantage of that. And so what we really wanted to do was give them software that they could run in house, right? And, you know, kind of obvious, right? Turned out to be really hard, right? So I've talked about it publicly a lot, right? I have not yet been able to show a demo of that product because I didn't have one. So I tweeted a, a demo video the Pivotal guys put together uh, just before I started. So if you got my Twitter handle there, if you check that out, and I'll tweet it again just afterwards, um, of a demo video we put together of this product installing on vSphere. It takes a, uh, the demo videos are about four and a half minutes. So that's one of those sort of cooking show demos, right? It takes about an hour to install. Um, and it's something that um, we were working on as I said, for a long time, when we spun Cloud Foundry out into Pivotal, um, you know, which uh, we continue to work with Pivotal on doing that, right, and making making this great product. And so we're going to ship it this year, um, and the first version, uh, the first version, and, and it'll target vSphere and uh, and our infrastructure as a service, vCloud hybrid service, um, and undoubtedly Pivotal will target uh, wonderful lots of other platforms as well over time. But um, for, for right now, this is what we're, we're focused on from the VMware point of view, um, and mostly focused on enterprise IT uh, develop and development, right? So it's not particularly focused, initially at least, at huge public clouds. It's this, this kind of target developer. Um, and so, um, so what is it? Well, it comes, as a, it comes as a virtual appliance, the Pivotal CF VM, which you run on top of your vSphere or VCHS infrastructure. Um, and so that's basically a proprietary thing, a package. Right, but it contains um, it contains a bunch of, of open source code. It contains the code from the open source project, and so you know the first thing you do, uh, deploy it, and then give it tell it about your infrastructure as a service. So in the case of um, of vSphere, this is a, a screenshot of it. You can see your vSphere thing on the, the left there, and you just go ahead and configure that, and you basically give it your um, your credentials. Right. So in the case of vSphere, you're telling it, you know, here's how you log into vCenter and do stuff. Uh, give it um, things like network configuration, uh, an interesting thing. It's actually, turns out, it's a source of uh, lots of um, fun inside of large enterprises, getting IP addresses that are, don't conflict with other things. Um, so, um, so give it these kind of credentials so that it's going to be able to go start installing VMs. So it actually goes and creates VMs and so forth. So um, once you've done that, that um, virtual appliance starts to create VMs. And the first one it creates is called MicroBosh, right? Um, so those of you familiar with the project, you know Bosch, and MicroBosch is essentially a single virtual machine version of Bosch. Um, and so um, and what we're going to then do is use that to deploy Cloud Foundry. So uh, Bosch is open source. Um, and, and basically, before we even start deploying and so on, you've told us about how big you want your Cloud Foundry. We actually go ahead and validate. Make sure the networks are there that you said, the storage. Make sure there's enough capacity. So a bunch of things. One of the um, the, for those of you who have actually tried to deploy Cloud Foundry from open source, you know that there's lots of, um, lots of ditches between here and there, as they say in Ireland, right? And so um, one thing is running out of capacity. And it's not like the logs say, oh, you're out of capacity, right? And the logs say something completely incomprehensible. So, um, so this is it deploying, right? So now you're asking MicroBosch to go ahead and start deploying. And here's the uh, beautiful um, uh, status update. I've got to say, by the way, the Pivotal guys do a fantastic job, right, don't they? So the, the beautiful UI and, and, uh, and a fantastic user experience in this. So it works its way down through the, the list of, of different actions and different activities 
to go ahead and deploy um, a Cloud Foundry. Right? And so you've told us during the initial stages how big you want it to be, so how many DEAs and Cloud Controllers and all the different things that you want. And, and so we go ahead and use Microbosh to deploy Cloud Foundry um, and put the developer console on there. Right? And the developer console is essentially a customized version of what you get on uh, run.pivotal.io. Right? So um, again, a fantastic piece of work from, from the Pivotal guys. OK, so at this point, you can run user applications. Right? You have a running Cloud Foundry. It took us about an hour to do this, um, uh, obviously depending on the size, but that's about right. So you can deploy user applications, um, and so you should be able to use it away, right? But of course, at some point, you're going to want to um, update it. And so uh, it's a pretty simple mechanism, right? To, to upgrade your version of, of, of Pivotal CF, basically replace the virtual appliance, right? Now, if you just did that, it wouldn't know about the existing installation. So the, essentially, there's a mechanism to export the config and import it, right? So you're moving your configuration from one to the other. And so now the new one knows all about the existing installation, right? So, and then it'll offer you to check all the versions and so on and offer you an opportunity to update it. For services, um, so we do have some stuff in the box. Um, the, the Pivotal guys are working hard on, on uh, I think MySQL is in the screenshot there and in the demo. Um, and I'll let James tell you about anything else. Um, so there is some stuff in the box. What, uh, you know, I've been talking to big enterprises about this for a long time, and as have all my various other colleagues in this world. And a lot of the enterprises have always pretty much said, hey, we already run Oracle or, or SQL Server, whatever it is. We run stuff, right? And so what we really want is access to, to those existing services. And so uh, that is a use case that we expect to see a lot of, right? Um, we call it user provided services in the, the Cloud Foundry world. They, they named, I had a really terrible name for it. Um, what did I call it? A service broker, I think. Service connector then. Yeah, so user provided services, like proper marketing. Um, so name people can understand. And so that's what's happening here at the bottom, right? Is, is basically making it easy for you to connect your existing services, so maybe an existing Oracle database, to Cloud Foundry. And what we, what we do there is essentially um, you, you tell us about the connection string for Oracle, whatever it is, right? So um, IP address, port number, database name, user ID, and password, right? And we'll present that information to your application in the same way as we would present it if you had created that database using an, a built-in service, OK? So that lets you not build in production credentials into your source code and lets you leverage the existing mechanisms without have, having to, with, with, while being able to use the services you already have on-prem, okay? Um, all right, uh, so what we're doing at the moment is we're, we're hardening, hardening the vCloud CPI um, for, for, for Bosch, right? And so that basically means that's to allow us to deploy on top of the vCloud hybrid service or, um, and, and, and make that work well, right? And so we have actually had this in open source for a while um, I don't think uh, we at least hadn't used it in anger up until now, so we're doing that right now. And, and actually, I'm just uh, if anybody else is interested in working with us on that, um, right now we think it's pretty good, but we'd love other people to try it out and tell us that or otherwise, because um, obviously that's much better. So we'd love to work with anybody else who's, who's interested in that area. Um, obviously, um, so vSphere provides um, a really reliable underlying virtualized infrastructure, so using HA, a DRS and these various other facilities in the hypervisor. So obviously we are making sure that the, all of those will work well in the context of this Cloud Foundry deployment, right? And we can take advantage of it. So um, ultimately that's just trying to make as stable an installation of Cloud Foundry as possible. Um, where we go next is uh, basically continue to integrate with some of our other products. So for example, we have a log management product, log inside, SRM for DR, things like that, right? And I think, you know, it's, it's fairly, um, Probably pretty obvious the kind of things that we would do there to integrate it across the board. Um, for more broadly, for Cloud Foundry though, um, you know, I, and I, I think there's some really interesting stuff coming up, and, and from a technology point of view, but there's also like why would you care, right? And the use cases. So to me, um, one of the things I've wanted to do with Cloud Foundry is, and we've all been trying to do for a long time is proliferate it, right? So we open sourced it, we set up the, um, the, the service, the PaaS service, the public service, made it free, lots of people got to use it, right? Um, to me, packaging it, that'll help a lot. 
and .NET will help a lot, right? And so I'm very, very enthusiastic about getting .NET into Cloud Foundry. A lot of the people we talk to, they want to use it for, you know, first for tier two and three apps. They want to use it for uh, various other kinds of Windows apps and so on. They basically want to use it in contexts where Windows is important to them. Uh, to me, also, Microsoft kind of gifted us the opportunity to do a really good .NET PaaS. Um, so thank you. So <laughs> I kind of want to take advantage of that because they're not in the habit of handing out those opportunities. Um, I'll skip at the end just for a second. Um, distributed key value store, everything uh, uh, really useful. And, and um, I think Kathy at Intel mentioned identity as a service. Um, the, the first use case here, active active deployment, right? So starting to see some of that, and that is where people run active active in multiple data centers. I've seen it in, in several of our more sophisticated um, users or customers of Cloud Foundry. Um, and so there's distributed stores, important for that. Um, but I think, so I don't know how many of you know what software-defined networking means. It's, it's basically um, a technology that allows you to build networks on top of your existing networks, and the new ones are completely logical. So um, just to give you an example, one thing you could do is create a network that your app runs on, and it's, it's services, it's databases, and no other app is running on that network. It's a logical network. So that lets you do things like multicast, maybe, between <laughs> nodes of the app, which lets you do clustering. Right, so there's some pretty, um, and it's obviously also a secure, useful for security. So SDN is, um, I, I think it's got really interesting uses in isolation and security. And also I'm kind of intrigued as to what will happen around active active, right? It, can you stretch a network across data centers? Does that make sense? Do we stretch an instance of Cloud Foundry across data centers, right? And does that make sense, right? Um, the um, mobile apps is, I, I think, an obvious um, great fit for Cloud Foundry, right? And where Cloud Foundry essentially becomes an API server, right? So you, you build APIs on the back end and run them on Cloud Foundry, scale them independently. Um, something I actually haven't seen yet is people using Cloud Foundry as a packaging mechanism for on-prem software. Um, kind of, I'm kind of wondering if, if and when that'll happen. Um, if you're an ISV, excuse me, that would give you a quite an interesting opportunity to maybe scale your application and provide standardized mechanisms for ingress and egress and so on for, for your application um, and give you kind of a stable platform to deploy on, leverage the work that um, the, the Pivotal team and Cloud Foundry team are doing to make Cloud Foundry work well on lots of different infrastructures. Um, security, I, I think the, I addressed it already around SDN, um, though I think it was Kathy who mentioned identity. For me, identity as a service, especially in enterprises, seems strikingly useful, right? Not many enterprise guys using OAuth 2 and things like that yet. Um, they generally have Active Directory, and so to me, this seems like a really great place for us to inject some of the, the newer web technologies into enterprise uh, development use cases. Uh, the last one, um, you know, something I've been talking about a long time, uh, really, is is just doing, using um, Cloud Foundry as an analytics platform. And um, you know, hopefully the, the Pivotal guys will come out with something much cleverer than anything I've, I'm talking about here. But you know, I think about things like R as a, as a language platform in, in Cloud Foundry, right? And can you use that as a, an analytics platform? Do you use Hadoop as a, as a service or MapReduce as a service in some form? Uh, various other analytics services. So I think there's a set of um, really interesting things there in analytics. Um, that we could do and, um, and make a, well, open up some new use cases for Cloud Foundry. Because right now it's kind of uh, webby, right? It's mostly used for HD, serving HTTP requests, and that's about it. So um, that's it for me.